man, an F-350. I have never seen an electric F-350. Tell me about this. Right. So this is an electric F-350. It's a 2022. To give you guys a little bit of the specs on it, we've got a 62 and a half uh, kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, those are made with LG NMC modules. There's nine of them in a cube formation here. Uh, we have 125 kilowatt charging rate through our DC fast charger and a 6.6 .6 kilowatt uh, charging rate on our level two charger. It currently has 3,300 uh, foot, foot pounds of torque at the wheels and 300 horsepower. Its towing capacity is up to 27,000 pounds, uh, so a little bit more than the average EV. I was gonna say 27,000 pounds. I mean, you're talking like big diesel numbers now. So, I mean, and 3,300 pound feet of torque is a mountain. Well, let's go over here and let's look under the hood of this thing here. And so tell me a little bit of what am I looking at in here for the average you know, person who doesn't know about EVs, what makes this tick? So basically we have the entire battery pack right here, which replaces where the internal combustion engine was. And then we have our power distribution box here, which is all the giant relays and fuses that make the power turn on. Okay. Uh, the box in the How back How about this there, guy? Yeah, the box in the back there is our DC fast charge unit. So that handles all the communication from the vehicle to the infrastructure for your, uh, you know, your Electrify America, your charge points and all those uh, fast charge stations there. Okay, now if I wanted to fast charge this, do I have to open the hood? I mean, how would I actually charge it? It's right up here in the front. It's easy access. So all your charging happens right here. Um, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, it just seems to take so long to charge your vehicle, but it literally only takes me uh, less than a minute to charge my vehicle because when I get home at night, yeah. I, I plug the vehicle in, I walk away, when I wake up, the vehicle's charged, so. Okay, now that's at home, right? Yeah. So at home, you're using the J1772. Correct. All right, yeah. now, but that DC fast charging, you're gonna use both, and now when you plug that in, and I really like this, it's super easy access, but, Give me a realistic time. This is a 62 kilowatt pack. Yeah. What would it take to charge time wise to charge, say, 60% of that pack? Well, I'll just tell you 100% of the pack. It's about 30, okay. 30 to 40 minutes to charge the entire pack. 40 minutes? Yeah. At, at the 125 kilowatt charge rate. Yeah. Okay. I know this is a stupid question. Why isn't everybody doing this for, for a truck? I, I don't know. And, you know, that was the reason why we originally started doing this truck uh, at my previous company was because we were looking to fill a void. A lot of fleet operators, they were getting mandates from especially the state of California where they need to be uh, zero emissions by X date, right? But there's just not many OEMs that can build a vehicle with the kind of capacity that this does to meet their needs. So this has a range of about 100 miles. This was built, so it was a purpose built uh, build. So they said, hey, our average uh, mileage is about 60 miles per day. So that's why we built this pack to this size and everything. Um, well, it's a truck, so I imagine you could put batteries in the bed, put a false floor over it, reinforce it, still have you all your uh, load capacity and extend that range by another 100 miles. Yeah, we actually did that with another uh, 2020 uh, F-250. We extended the battery pack to 125 kilowatts, giving us about 130 miles of range. Uh, at some point, there's a bit of a diminishing return. The more batteries you put in there, the more mass is in the vehicle. More weight, yeah. harder to, yeah, yeah. And so, so it's not just a direct one-to-one -one replacement where you could just put as much batteries in as you want. Um, okay, now this is an F-350, right? Now, now, how, what other vehicles have you done? Because I heard you say F-250. Yeah. So how many of these and, and what range of products can you convert? So we've done F-250s, F-350s, E-350s, E-450, Zusu NPR, Ram 1500, uh, Series 1 Land Rover, uh, Jeep Wrangler. Uh, we're working with Mitch over at Torque Trends to... Uh, get my Jeep to four wheel drive uh, capacity with the uh, IM225 so I'll be able to burn out all four wheels. Okay, so it sounds like like these uh, uh, commercial guys should be coming to you to, to electrify their fleets. Right, That's we're actually working right now with a company in South America uh, 
a big need for uh, South America was the Sprinter van, which we've actually done many Sprinter vans before as well. And uh, Mercedes pulled their production facility out of Argentina. And so now they have import laws that don't allow them to import used products or anything. So they need a direct replacement new from a factory. And that's where we come in. We give them a low maintenance, low cost, uh, warrantied product for their fleets, which is going to extend the life, you know, 10 years plus. Let's uh, talk about some of the stuff that you guys do sell. Yeah. All right. Now, what are we looking at here? Because my understanding is this is what's powering that guy, right? So what is all of this? So this is the 300 horsepower Cascadia IM225. It has an inverter and motor integrated into one. And we've got the torque trans torque box here. That's a three to one gear ratio, which is why we're able to get such high torque values to the rear wheels. Okay. Now, I'm a car guy. And you name it, I got more motors in my mind than you could ever imagine. More information that you want to hear. But you said inverter and torque box, and man, that means nothing to me. I'm a gas guy. Right. So how could I learn to do all this and, you know? So I actually have a class that we're putting on. It's uh, through the Electrified University. No way. Yeah. And, well, <laughs> and what, we, what, we, what we do is we actually go through mm -hmm. and we explain not just an overview of the products, but we go in-depth to every single function of every single product, how they all integrate with each other, how they inter interact, and what's happening on a physics level, right? So we're, we're offering you guys an overview of basic engineering of an entire electric vehicle system. So if you take this class, by the end of the class, you'll be able to build an entire electrification system just like I have here. I wanna get all the information from my brain out to everybody else. There's no reason why you shouldn't know that this is 300 horsepower and you can pick it up with your hands. I've never even fathomed that. Right, okay, ice. well now with that being said, well let's look at the table here. Let's talk about some of these parts that you'll learn about in class. Yeah. So let's just start here and let's go down the line. All right. So this is the BMS right here. This this controls the whole battery right here. That's that's kind of the brains behind the battery. That's the safety systems. That's every control that you could imagine with the whole battery. And that gives So this battery management system, BMS. Correct. Yes. Okay. And that's that actually speaks to the VCU right here and the vehicle VCU. control unit. Yes, and that's the entire brains of everything. So this is the supervisory controller that will control every single power electronics in the vehicle itself. Okay. All right. So and then we, we do we do a lot actually a lot of control systems uh, overview in the class that we're doing. Uh, so that way you can program this and you don't have to be a you know a software engineer to be able to do it. Uh, right. We give you the tools to be able to do that. Okay, so what do we have here? So these are two different battery types right here. So uh, this is the uh, Volkswagen, i.e. done by uh, LG. This is their NMC uh, module right here. And then this is your standard um, lithium battery. It's a, This is a standard packaging type in the industry. This was done by Core Power uh, okay. out here in Arizona. Now, let me ask you this. If the batteries are different, why wouldn't you just have like one double A battery or one nine volt battery or one battery that, you know, kind of Swiss army knife? Right. So because they have different chemistries, they have different properties that allow them to discharge the energy at different rates and charge at different rates. And some of them have different capacities as well. So think of it like your gas tanks and fuel injectors. That's what that's what these equate to in the internal combustion engine. Okay, all right, well yeah, let's move on. So what do we have right here? This is the DC fast charge unit. This handles all the communication and a giant relay to turn on uh, fast charging in the vehicle. This is a divorced inverter. So this is like on the top of the IM225. If you wanted to, let's say, have uh, the motor and the inverter in different locations, you can have this be a remote unit and fit in smaller places. Now, could I use this inverter with a different motor? Yes, you definitely can. So th this inverter will power any of the uh, electric motors as it stands right now. So any Cascadia motor, could be powered by this guy. Not even a Cascadia motor. It could be any motor that you want. If you wanted to run another manufacturer's motor, you could use that as well. 
Oh, wow. Okay, well, now that is something good to know. All right, so what do we have right here? So this is the high voltage heater. This helps with your thermal management. Um, in the cold weather, uh, the batteries don't like being cold, so uh, that makes sure to keep them uh, thermally managed at the level that it, they want to see so you don't lose capacity and range. Okay, all right, and so now moving on, what do we have here? Moving on here, we have two different types of uh, onboard charger slash DC DC converters. These are combination units, so they handle both functions. So these will do si both of these will do 6.6 .6 kilowatts for level two charging. Right. And then on the other side, the DC DC side, that's basically like your alternator in a vehicle. So it recharges your low voltage battery. So it has a 12 volt output. This one is one, uh, this one is 1 1.4 kilowatt on that side of the output. And this one's 2.5. So a little bit higher capacity if you're running more auxiliary systems and everything. Okay, so now I have a question about what you just said. Yeah. So let's say you, you threw a number out there, 6.6 kilowatts so that means nothing to me so what what does 6.6 .6 kilowatts mean so what it means is the battery that's in our vehicles the 62 and a half kilowatt hour packs yeah. uh, you get about a 10 hour charge time when you're running 6.6 .6 kilowatts so okay. it'll so 6.6 .6 kilowatts means in one hour this thing will put 6.6 .6 kilowatts into my pack in an hour correct that is Okay, all right. All right, well, uh, now, so I see we got some, like, accessories here, yeah, and I'm guessing this is the support stuff for all the big stuff that we just talked about. Yeah, so this is the inverter cable. So this plugs into the inverter, and that goes into your power distribution box. So when the battery turns on, it sends the energy into the inverter when you command the inverter to do so. Okay. Uh, this is a thermal management uh, box. So this expands the thermistors in the vehicle so you can have multiple um, readings on different points of the vehicle for temperature. So multiple checkpoints to see what your temperatures are yeah. throughout the vehicle, throughout not the just in the battery. Vehicle. Yeah, we do them inside of the battery. We do it uh, outside of the battery and inside of the cabin. So that way we can do um, you know all of the air conditioning controls and all that okay uh, all right we have then, actuators here for the parking pole on the torque trends uh torque box right here okay. so when we put the vehicle into park it sends a signal into here which then actuates that arm and pushes the parking pole into and the motor basically emergency brake not emergency brake no. Parking brake. Parking brake. Yeah. yeah, it's a physical, it's a physical mechanical uh, gear around the sun gear, yeah. and then the pawl goes down onto that, and it physically locks it into place. So you don't have to worry about your vehicle rolling away. Exactly. Okay. All right. What do we got next? Here's the high voltage AC compressor right here. So this does two functions. One, it does uh, cooling inside of the vehicle, your air conditioning in there. And then it also runs in parallel with a uh, heat exchanger that super cools the battery system and the power electronic cooling system. So so why would you need to super cool batteries? So when you put 125 kilowatts, uh, you know, through the battery when you're DC fast charging, that's a lot of heat. And so, so it generates heat when you're charging mostly. And, yeah, and discharging as well. Okay. Uh, and we're out here in Phoenix. You know, we're no stranger to heat out here. That is a true statement. All right, so what we got next so yeah, This is the pump that actually pushes all the fluid through the thermal management system right here. Okay. So we have multiple pumps and uh, we couple those with multiple valve systems here. So we have an array of different valves uh, that give you different configurations. So if you want to heat some things, cool the other things, it helps optimize the cooling system. Okay, and then I see you have a different flavor of VCU. Yeah, we have right. a couple. We've got a different VCU from another manufacturer, Ecotron, and then uh, this is a body control module right here. So this handles all of the uh, vehicle information. So what we do on this vehicle, we actually... I don't want to say hack, but, you know, we hack into their system. We just listen. So okay. we... For safety reasons, you never want to inject any messages into the OEM systems. You only want to listen to those, so you can use okay. those in your control system to actuate things and do different functions. So, Okay, all right, so last two things I want to talk about. Let's talk about okay. this and this. What, what, what do we got right here? So th these are contactors. So these are the giant relays that actually take you know from the battery side to the power distribution side. Okay. This is the thing that controls it all. And I will note, you'll see that there's four wires. One is for the coil and one is a secondary. This is a great safety feature that I would love everybody in this industry to use. Um, some don't use it and, and I, that's why I wanna you know, make it known. Yeah. This basically tells you 
that your contactor is closed. So you can put in a function, a check system, to make sure that your contactors aren't welded, because that can happen. Uh, if you don't do a, a specific- If you don't pre-charge and it just bam, it, it hits it, know, welds them closed. Yep, that's it. So you need to bring the voltage of the battery up to the rest of the system voltage. Right. You charge all the capacitors inside all of these high voltage components. So that way there's no real load when you go to con uh, close the contactors. Let's say you didn't do that. Well, if there's a big load waiting for power and you start inducing a uh, power to it, it'll arc across yeah. those contactors and when it arcs that's a lot of heat yeah and so it actually becomes molten metal and then when it closes then the heat starts to dissipate and now it's cold and you've just welded that contactor shut and then if you turn your car off that doesn't open up doesn't so as open. far as your car knows yeah everything is good but those metal contacts are still there so now you got live voltage live where voltage. you wouldn't expect it exactly. as dangerous yep dangerous so this is a this is a great safety feature and it costs nothing to have the contact with it. Right. Okay, last one. What we got right here? Yeah, so this is a standard uh, level two charger right here. So this is a 40 amp charger. So this will deliver the 6.6 .6 kilowatts on the level two. This okay. is what I use at home on the regular. So okay. it's a standard uh, NEMA 1450 charge plug right here. Yeah. So 240 volts and uh, like I said, about 40 amps. And that charges the vehicle up in about 10 hours overnight from zero to 100, but we rare, we never go down to zero, right? right? So basically, if you're not driving 100 miles the other day, you really have no range anxiety and you have no wait time to charge because you plug it in, go home, go to sleep, and next morning it's ready to rock and roll. Right, so I, I still have over 50% state of charge on the vehicle and I live 40 miles from here yeah. and I actually drove the vehicle home last night Okay. I did back here this morning, so I didn't have to get in. <laughs> All right, I like it. All right, so now, last thing. So if somebody wanted to build one of these, get one of these, buy one of these, how can we contact you and how can we find out, you know, look more of what you're doing? Yeah, so you can go to preservewatts.com. Uh, that's our website. It'll give you lots of information. Uh, and uh, you can give me a call. My phone number's on there. My direct line is on there. So uh, I can help uh, explain everything and, you know, get you past those hurdles that you might have. All right. Well, hey, well, next thing we're going to do is uh, maybe on the next video, man, I want to drive one of these things. I want to ride around and yeah. see how it handles. Yeah. Hey, thanks for taking the time to talk to me, man. Hey, we'll see you guys next time on Gas and Go with Snow. Snow, thank you very much. The streets got the swagger on oh my first stop. He needs a dude with a low bottom machine. Cherry red paint, chrome wheels like green. Snow pulls out his camera, ready to roll. Gas ain't gold with snow. Time to steal the show.